Hello, this is lesson 10-6 on the surface area of pyramids, cones, and spheres. In tonight's lesson, you're going to be able to find the surface area of pyramids, and you're also going to be able to find the surface area of cones and spheres for a second objective. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so again, we're going to focus first on pyramids, then cones, then spheres. All right, so when we first talk about, well, pyramids and cones and how to find their surface area, it's important that we talk about slant height. And that is the height of a face in one of those pyramids and cones. So it's not at the actual height of it, because when we talk about the height, it's normally a straight line going from the vertex all the way down to the base. But that's not necessarily true. Here we have a slant height, which is just the height from one of the side of the faces, to the top. Alright, so when we find the surface area of both pyramids and cones, they're going to talk about slant height. And how they do that? Well, first they talk about lateral area. So, to first find the lateral area of it, you take half the um, perimeter and times it by L, which is the slant height. Now, it makes sense because um, in the last lesson, we talked about how to find the slant height of prisms. And we did, well, the area of the, or excuse me, not the area, the perimeter of the base and times it by the height. This is the same idea. You're taking the base here, which is a square, and then you're timesing it by the height of it. But they have to do it by, or times it by half because remember, these faces are actually triangles. And what do we know about triangles? Well, they're half of a square or half of a rectangle. Alright, so first in pyramids we find the lateral area, then again at the end you just add in that area of the base. So let's get started, find the lateral area. Alright, so we're going to have to do half the perimeter times the slant height. So first let's find the perimeter. I know here on my base, it's a square so all the sides are the same. So it can be 5 meters, 5 meters, 5 meters, 5 meters. So 5, 10, 15, 20. So my perimeter here is 20 meters. And my slant height, the height of the slanted line, is 8 meters. There we go. So I go ahead and multiply that. 1 half times 20 is 10, times 8 is 80 meters squared. So that's the lateral area. Now I find the area of the base. Well, a base here is just a rectangle, so you do length times width. So 5 meters times 5 meters, and I get 25 meters squared. So I add those together. So 80 plus 25 meters squared is 105 meters squared. That would be the surface area of this figure. All right, why don't you go ahead and try this one. First, find the lateral area. So again, half the perimeter times the slant height. And again, only one of those are the slant height. So use the slanted height and then add in the area of the base. And again, we're going to make an assumption. Well, actually, I don't think we can make an assumption about this one. I'm going to say this width is 8 meters along this side. So when you go ahead and try to solve this one, and when you're all done, come back and check your answer. So pause me now. All right, let's go ahead and uh, try this one. So one half times the perimeter, well, I've been 16 inches, ooh, 8 inches, 16 inches, and 8 inches. So 16 plus 16 is 32, 40, 48 inches. And my slant height here is 17 inches. It is not the 15, because that 15 is a straight line, not the slanted height of one of those spaces. Okay, you have to be careful on that. Then you multiply it together. Half times 48 times 17, and you end up with 408 inches squared. And then we do the um, area of the base, so 16 inches times 8 inches. So 16 times 8, and you get 128 inches squared. So I have my lateral, I have my area of the base, so add them together. And your answer should have been 536 inches squared. That would be the surface area of that pyramid. So we talked about pyramids, now we do cones. When we do cones, it's really the same idea. 
right? Here, for the lateral parity, start with the lateral and you do pi times the radius times that L, which is the slant height again. And then you add in that area of the base, which here, because it's a cone, it's going to be a circle. So it's going to end up being pi times radius squared. And this is going to be one of those ones where I wait till the end to actually multiply by 3.14. So let's go ahead and try this one. Lateral area, I know it's equal to pi times radius times the slant height. So my radius is 3 meters. My slant height is 7 meters. And it's going to be times pi. So 3 meters times 7 meters is 21 pi meters squared. There we go. So 21 pi. So now I go ahead and do the area of the base, which is base or pi r squared. My radius is again 3, so 3 well, meters, excuse me, squared times pi, and you get 9 pi meters squared. So I have my 21 pi, my 9 pi, add them together, and I get 30 pi meters squared. So I've been at the end to find the approximate. I times that, change pi to 3 and 1400. So 30 times 3 and 1400 is 94 and 2 tenths meters squared. There we go. So again, just keep in mind, lateral area, pi times radius times the slant height. The area of the base here, the base is a cone, so it's pi r squared. And then I added those things together. Let's practice this one. So find the surface area of this cone. So here I have an ice cream cone, but they give us the same general information. All right, we need to find the lateral area first, and then the area of the base. All right, so pi times radius times slant height. And here, base is going to be a circle, so pi r squared. All right, I gave you this part. I want you to go ahead and try to solve it. So find the answer, and when you're all done, come back and check your answer. So go ahead and pause me now. All right, let's go ahead and do this one. So again, radius here is 2 inches. Slant height is 6 inches. So I have 12 pi inches squared for an answer. That's my lateral area. And then for this one, again, my radius is 2 inches. So 2 inches squared is 4 pi inches squared. So I have those two pieces added together. 12 plus 4 is 16 pi inches squared. To find the approximate surface area, times by 3 and 14 hundredths. So 16 times 3 and 14 hundredths. You should have had the answer 50 and 24 hundredths inches squared. There we go. Alright, so this is how you find the surface area of homes. Final piece is going to talk about spheres. And again, a sphere is just really a three-dimensional circle. All points go to a midpoint, but it's the same distance from all sides. Alright, so surface area. I have here a Tootsie Roll Pop, and we're going to make some assumptions. That one, it's a sphere that's um, say all the way around, it's uh, fine, and so on. So we're going to make that assumption. And how we find the surface area of this is really just with one key formula. 4 times pi times radius squared. Now, when we talk about the area of the circle, we just use pi r squared. That 4 comes in because it takes 4 circles to have the same area as a sphere. So, if you had four circles, it's the same area as just one sphere with that same radius. Alright, so that's how we come up with 4 pi r squared. So, on this one, we're going to go ahead and put it in. 4 times pi times radius squared. And again, I wait to do pi to the end. So, I can do 4 times radius, which is 5 centimeters squared. Alright, and then times pi. And again, order of operations, I start within the parentheses, or with the exponent, so I have 25 centimeters squared times 4, and I get 100 pi centimeters squared. There we go. But again, you go ahead and just find the approximate by changing pi to 3 and 1400. 
So 100 times 3 and 1400, well, you just move the decimal over to get 314 centimeters squared. So basically what you're doing here is just finding the radius squared it, times it by 4, and then times that whole answer by 3 and 1400. Here's your chance. Okay, Earth has an approximate radius of 3,963 miles. What is the Earth's approximate surface area to the nearest thousandth of a mile squared? Assume that Earth is a sphere. So again, you can go ahead and do this one. You, what I want you to do actually is go ahead and set this one up. And just, you don't have to actually solve it because to be honest, in your calculator, you're going to get some scientific notation in here. So what I want you to do is just set this problem up as if you were to solve it. So put in the key important part, and then from there, just stop. So go ahead and do this now. So go ahead and fill in what pi is and the, yeah, well, pi and the radius and so on. All right, so if you were to set it up, and you should have done this while I was just gathering away to myself, you would have had 4 times pi times radius squared. Well, you know, Pi times radius is 3,963 squared. And again, if you put that in your calculator already, you get a pretty large number. You get 15,705,369. Um, All right, and then you times that by 4. All right, and if I were to do this, I'm kind of just solving it as I go. 6 pi miles squared. So this is what your answer is. 62,821,476 times pi miles squared. Now if you were to times it by 3.14, that's when you get some scientific notation in here. And that's all right. So we're going to just leave our answer in this form for this one since it's getting on there. But that's our lesson for tonight. Tonight we talked about how to find the surface area of pyramids using half the perimeter times the slant height and then adding in that area of the base. We talked about how to find the surface area of a cone by doing pi times radius times the slant height, then adding in that area of that circle space. And finally, how to find the surface area of circles, which is 4 times pi times radius squared. Have a terrific night. I will see you tomorrow.